Hello friends, it's your friend Lee McCormack from Lee Likes Bikes, Ripro and such. There's a Ripro right back there by the vacuum. I got the um, the very ascetic life here um, in this uh, my friend's basement. It's not a basement, first floor apartment. I still pay for the house on the mountain above Boulder, but this is beautiful. Anyway, that's that. So um, I was thinking about the role we play in each other's lives and um, the power that a very kind word from someone we, we respect can have for us. And um, I can think of lots of examples in my life where I've been gifted with that. But the, here's a specific one, okay? So we're talking 1993. That's that fall of 93. I had um, been a mountain biker since about 1989. I had um, got my associate's degree at, at Saddleback Junior College in Southern California, where I became friends with Brian Lopes at the time. Um, world-class national champion BMX guy. And uh, we started riding bikes together and began mountain biking. Back then, I used to kick his ass uphill. It wasn't even funny. But then when I went to college one semester, his car got stolen, and he started commuting by bike to like work at the bike shop where he was, and his fitness came on. And that was the end of that, and we didn't know where Brian Lopes wound up. But anyway, so, you know, I'd gone off to college. Um, I'd done an internship um, in Sacramento at a newspaper, and I was back home, you know, um, riding and looking for jobs. So at, at that point in my life, I was riding with Brian Lopes every, every day. And it's interesting, too, because at that point, I was given an opportunity, an opportunity. Like, I could have worked at Entrepreneur Magazine as a copy editor for $18,000 a year. I would have lived with Brian, and we would have been bike racers, and I would have had this job. That would have been, I guess, the blue pill. The red pill was I got a job for $19,000 right up in the Bay Area, which was like the big scary move. And that's the one I chose. And so it's funny, like, like I chose not to be a bike guy, but then that path led me to the careers in newspapers and in software design back to the bike world as a stronger human being. So fate's funny. And that's a lot of background. But anyway, so I'm back and we're riding with Brian all the time. And um, we did shuttles on this famous trail called the San Juan Trail. It's in Southern California, very famous. And we were, this group was um, Brian Lopes and me. This is the first time I met them. Um, Eric Carter, who at the time was, um, we, he was shuttling in the national champion BMX truck that he had won for winning the series. So we're sh shuttling in that. And they're all kind of transitioning to mountain bikes back then. Lee Donovan was with us, um, who became a superstar. Um, Stickman Glassbill, um, Craig Glassbill, but he always goes by Stickman. They were dating and now they're married and he had a, a illustrious career. He works for uh, Troy Lee Designs, TLD. I think he's in marketing. And then uh, um, another guy, I don't remember. But oh, no, no. Um, the point of this, and I already mentioned Eric Carter, but another guy, I don't remember, BMX guy. So anyway, we're doing shuttles. And um, at one point, right, we're, we're going, dude. We're hauling ass. And like, we're in it. And Brian's leading, and I'm second, and Eric Carter's third. And I'm on Brian's wheel. Like, it's funny on hindsight, like the limitations that we, that I possess. Because in my mind, I was still very much like, I'm an imposter. I don't belong here. But the fact of the matter is, he doesn't suffer fools. You don't ride with Brian Lopes every day unless you're good enough. And I was. I didn't believe it. So um, I'm on his wheel. I'm on his wheel. And Eric Carter's on my wheel. And we're shredding, dude. And this is, um, we would have been on hardtails. Maybe I had like a 50 millimeter fork back then. A Marzocchi XC400. That was my fork. And um, anyway, so I was just like, whoa, that's, that's Eric Carter. Like, I better get out of the way. And I got out of the way. And he came through, and I got on his wheel and followed him the rest of the way down the hill. And that was a great ride. And that was kind of my everyday back then. I was riding with these guys. And um, we are in the truck. And uh, I, I relayed this to EC later on because we're, we're all peers now. So I rode with a guy last year, like on his home trails that he built. And uh, I relayed this to him. But I, I, um, I remember, like, we're in the back of the truck. And he's all, Lee, dude, why did you pull out of the way? You know? And I was like, dude, like, that's freaking Brian Lopes. And I know who you are. You're freaking Eric Carter. I'm just me. I didn't want to be in the way. And he's all, bro, you're in the way. You were riding great, man. Next time, just freaking do your thing, man. That was all. That, and you know what? That was, um, that was 93. So what are we talking about here? 29 years ago. 
One kind phrase from someone I massively respected has been in me and kind of helping me for 29 years. So thank you, Eric Carter. I, of course, I'm not an Eric Carter, and I'm not a Brian Lopes, but I'm a pretty, I'm becoming a better Lee McCormack. And I tried deeply hard, and it's not hard to do because it's it's intuitive to, to, to be honest and positive with people. And I think it, it helps. So that's that. A little about me, a little anecdote, a little bit of an allegory, ha da ba da. And I hope that's helpful in any way. So remember, like, people look up to you. You're a leader in your world. Spread the love. Um, Anama Stoke. You guys like this design here with the, the, the duh and the ta? And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.